Welcome back to Seduce Me to the Demon War demo, where apparently we're on Eric's route and the boys want to kidnap Eric. Apparently they return him later. I don't know what they're up to though, but their smiles tell me they're up to something except for Sam, who's just like, mm. But we have to. Everything will be alright. You can finish working on your dress while we keep him out of the house. Huh? I mean, yeah, but. You could survive a day without your love slave. You're marrying him after all. It's not like he'll be gone forever. He's no might. Sam. Everything will be all right, Princess, I promise. As soon as we're done with whatever they want to do, then I'll come straight home. Good. Don't get lost. D don't like, fall through a portal or anything. What are they up to? Okay, I love you. I could barely make out him saying I love you too as he was dragged away by his brothers. As the front door closed, I could hear Eric being thrown over someone's shoulders, probably Sam's. I sighed before looking around the mansion. Since I was indeed alone, I had the chance to try and find that spirit again. Why had you run away the first time? I quickly rushed to the backyard, looking around. It was much brighter, yes, but perhaps the spirit was still there. Despite not being able to find it, I, scored, I scoured the entire mansion in hopes of meeting the orb again. It had almost become a game of hide and seek, only I didn't know if the orb was hiding or was gone. After a straight hour of looking around, I gave up. The orb was nowhere to be found, and I was certain I could, wouldn't meet it again. I only let out to sigh at the thought, but I shook my head to forget about it at last. It had given me a moment of my love, so I was grateful. I went back to my room and flopped on my bed, not really sure what to do. I could have organized what I was going to wear with my dress, but I really didn't want to pull my dress out of the garment bag it was in. Staring the ceiling, I felt my eyelids slowly getting heavy, and as soon as I was letting my sudden drowsiness take hold me, what was happening? Why did I feel like sleeping? It was close to noon, or was it past noon? I somehow couldn't remember it anymore. I let myself to fall asleep, blaming the search in the wedding dress that lingered my mind for trying me out. No! N it's a lullaby again. What the hell is going on? My body floated in darkness, met once again by a soft and peaceful lullaby. The nap was perfect and I definitely deserved it. My body felt comfortable, my thoughts were lullabied in a quiet hum that accompanied the lullaby in the air. What is up with this lullaby? The only thing that I would have made it better was Eric. As if my dream wanted to please me, an image of Eric appeared in my mind. He smiled his heart-pulling smirk at me and I felt myself become warm and fuzzy just from his gaze as he floated over me. I became entranced in his eyes. My voice wouldn't come out despite wanting to say his name, but I wrapped my arms around his eye and pulled him close to me. He leaned into my brace, ghosting his lips over mine teasingly. Was Dream Eric trying to seduce me in my own dreams? Wouldn't be surprised with him, really, I would have. I pressed forward, wanting to kiss him. We both didn't make a sound, but let our kisses relay our love for each other between our lips. My heart pounded my chest as he wrapped his arms around my waist and pulled me even closer to him. I swear, if this gets interrupted, I will kill whoever interrupts this. It was strange. He felt so real in my arms. I combed my fingers through his hair, feeling the pink copper strands on top of his head. Yet this was a dream. I knew it was a dream. Something weird is going on. His arms gently ran along my back and waist, not daring to go below it, but making wonderful shivers run up my spine with each stroke. I really liked this dream and tied my hold on Eric, letting him know that I enjoyed his touch. Eric eventually pulled away from the kiss and smiled down at me, running a hand over my hair and caressing my cheek. I stared up at him laughingly, feeling a soft swell in my lips from the kiss we had shared. What I didn't expect was him slowly leaning down and planting a soft gift over my chest, just over where my heart was. I stared, unsure of why he did such a thing. As my heart began to feel warm and lighter, I felt a sigh and sigh over my throat, feeling the pleasure of its sensation. Okay. Eric slowly backed away and disappeared, but I continued to feel the warmth of my heart sweetly emanating through my veins like a soft adrenaline rush. What was happening to me? Tingles ran across every nerve of my body, making me shiver in delight. Whatever this was, I liked it. Soon the warmth lullied me into a peaceful hum, and I curled into myself, wrapping my arms around my body from the comfort it brought me. I felt at peace while my body felt like it was embracing the warmth enveloping it. It was strange, but I accepted the restful feeling. Hello? 
Hello? <laughs> God damn it! What's he doing here? What's happening? What? From the darkness, the dark laughter invaded my ears, breaking the lullaby and making a sudden cold feeling wash over my spine. Before I could react, however, a large and deep pain invaded my chest, almost like a sword stabbing all the way through my body. What the hell is going on? I couldn't see anything of the sort as I looked down at my chest, but my hands tightened over where the pain had erupted from. What was happening? I caught feeling blood splash out of my mouth and drip down my lips. I gasped for I disgusted at the copper taste in my mouth, but I was unable to break up the illusion. I needed to wake up. Ugh. Could we stop it with the stabby stabby, Mr. Pain in the Butt King? Go away. See, this is why I hate you. Every time we go to sleep, something always goddamn happens. The stabbing pain erupted from through my insides as if the invisible blade in my chest unsheathed itself from my torso. I felt a second stab through my stomach as more blood gushed from my mouth. Someone help me. I felt my body slowly start to shut down. Was I dying in my own dream? Why can't I wake up? Cold waves run through my nerves, numbing my body as if I was indeed slowly dying. A blood dripping from my chin. I felt lightheaded in the darkness. But an almost violent shake broke me from my dream, forcing me to physically open my eyes. Who is it? Princess! Eric! Thank God he's here. Ooh. You cut it close to me, you bloody cut that close. What the hell just happened? I gasped for I no longer able to taste blood or pain. I was back in my room staring at Eric's concerned face as he held my shoulders. I shared from the experience, unable to forget the feeling of being stabbed in my own dream. Eric, however, had saved me. Love, what happened? You were thrashing around and... I didn't let him finish. I grabbed Eric's body and slammed myself into his chest, happy to no longer be trapped in the dream and thankful that he woke me from it. I wrapped his arms around me and gently rubbed my back, soothing as I began to cry into his shoulder. Jeez. Did you have a nightmare? <laughs> that was not just a nightmare. Mm hmm. It was terrible. I was being tapped by something in the darkness and I couldn't do anything about it. Shh. It's okay now. You were safe. I'm right here. I could only nod as Eric rocked me back and forth, comforting me. It may have been a dream, but I was still mortified by it. It seemed almost too real to be just a dream. I didn't want to think about it anymore. I didn't want to remember the dream, especially how horrible it was. I was supposed to be getting mentally ready for my wedding, not having nightmares about dying. Eric kissed over my head and face, trying to soothe my sadness. He wiped away my tears and continued to hold me close, until I was calm and relaxed. I tried to reassure myself there was a dream. It was just a stupid dream. Just a nightmare. Eric gently pulled away, not releasing me from his arms, looked down at me with a soft frown. I'm sorry that I left. I should have been here, making sure that you had good dreams. You can't blame yourself for having a nightmare. Jesus. I shook my head. Eric needed to spend time with his brothers. It was important enough to him that he let himself be dragged away by them. No, no, it's alright. I'll be fine. Are you sure, Princess? Honestly, no, she's not going to be fine. Not when I know it's possibly going to happen. No mention, shouldn't she tell him that she could hear a demon? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I had to shake this off. I didn't know what was going on, but now Eric was here and I could be with him in case anything else happened. I finally calmed down. Eric told me about what the boys had done. They took Eric to a calf deep in downtown Chicago, just wanting to have a brother to brother talk with him. I was happy he got to spend time with him, but Eric had proudly rushed home to return to me. The dreams did not appear again that night. Eric used his powers to end my dreams and keep me safe from anything to try to hurt me, and thankfully nothing did. However, there was a strange feeling in my gut that didn't sit right with me. For some reason, Eric's comfort didn't make me feel okay. It was as if I didn't want him to be in my dreams. My heart knew this was a problem. I was unsure of how to respond to this new feeling. Slowly as the days passed by an irritating approach, the feeling became more ag aggressive. Soon it was coming irritated more easily. I became angry at the smallest thing, the steps he took, the things he'd wear, the looks he gave me, or what I assumed he gave me. What the hell's getting into it? What the hell? What are you doing to her? Jesus! No, Eric, I don't want to do anything right now. What? Why? You love him. What the hell's going on? Love, I didn't say any. Eric, this is wrong with her. You're looking at me with those sexy eyes again. What the hell? 
sex eyes? I swear, I, I wasn't doing anything of the sort. What is going on? You're doing it now. No, he's not. I couldn't tell the words that were flying out of my mouth. Something was wrong, but I continued to speak cruelly towards Eric. My heart was at odds with my mind, and I didn't know why I was doing it, but I continued my barrage. Will you just shut your mouth? Love, what is going on? Come on, Eric. Use your brain. Come on, sweetie. She starts acting weird ever since the nightmare. Come on. What's going on? You are. What? No. You? Shut up. Go to the coroner. I'm sorry. What's he doing? I felt Eric and Thrall take over my body, forcing me to go weak in the knees and mewling out in response. My mind stopped thinking about attacking Eric, and my heart felt entirely relieved that the urge was gone. Eric gently wrapped his arms around me, being sure to keep his arms around my shoulders and rock with me, trying to calm me down. Love, are you having doubts? No, she's not. No, no, I'm not. I don't know what I... You swear you're not having doubts about us? No, she's not. I promise. I was unable to speak the truth under a spell. It was strange. It was like I was under a curse when I wasn't under his enthrallment. Somehow, despite every little thing I did, yet I knew it wasn't true. I loved everything about him, but my mind wouldn't agree. I kept Eric sure and wanted to stay close and show him my true feelings for him. Listen to me, okay? I love you so much. If you have any doubts on us getting married, then please, please just tell me. I don't know what's going on in your beautiful head. Oh, that bloody king again. I am not happy right now. What the hell is going on with this route? 